Welcome. Thanks for joining in. My name is Nikolas Rauch and I will give you a brief overview of our approach for synthesizing 3D blood vessel geometry. In the scope of our research, we are interested in the automatic generation of vessel systems, specifically for the use in surgical training. At the very least, we want to aid an artist in creating complex blood vessel geometries for different organs in a virtual surgical scene. Our approach for generating reasonable realistic blood vessel networks is built by two biologically motivated concepts. The first is inspired by a biological growth process of blood vessels, namely angiogenesis. Without going into detail, this growth process basically develops blood vessels by sprouting from pre-existing vessels. These emerging branches then grow into the direction of tissue regions that need to be supported with oxygen, which means into areas with missing vasculature. This behavior where vessels try to reach these regions as fast as possible could be seen as a competition for space between these individual vessels. We simulate this by adopting the space colonization algorithm introduced by Runyans et al, which builds the foundation of our method. The second concept is built upon the assumption that blood vessels were optimized by evolution in such a way that they maintain blood flow with the least amount of biological work. Derived from this assumption are two geometric laws for bifurcations, which we include in the method. The first, Moore's law, relates the radius of a parent vessel with that of its children via this bifurcation exponent kappa. The second law defines optimal branching angles with respect to the overall volume inside a bifurcation. The main idea of our method is now to develop vessels by competition for space while at the same time enforcing these local geometry constraints. In addition to these two optimization principles, we also included constraints stemming from visual characteristics of real vascular patterns, for example, rather prominent symmetric bifurcations or the absence of heavy bending inside vessels, at least for healthy ones. Let me now summarize the three main steps of the algorithm, which are iteratively processed in a loop to develop the vessel trees. In the end, we will grow both the arterial and the venous system in parallel, but I will start with explaining only the former part. On the right, the black dotted line defines a tissue region in which vessels are allowed to grow. Blood vessels are represented as an oriented tree in which nodes describe positions and links the vessels itself. In the first step, oxygen drains are placed randomly inside the tissue. We can think of them as tissue cells that need to be supported with oxygen. In case they arise too close to existing vessel nodes, we remove them immediately because we consider the region around vessels satisfied in terms of oxygen support. Next the blood vessel will undergo a growth process in which they try to reach oxygen drains in their proximity. In this step, we enforce the previously mentioned geometry constraints. One of the approaches we use to guide vessels growth along valid directions is by restricting the area in which oxygen drains initiate blood vessel growth. For example, in the left image, we guide the elongation of vessels inside a conical volume to avoid heavy bending. On the right, we restrict the development of a new branch to follow the direction according to the optimal bifurcation angles. In case the development of the vessels led to satisfied oxygen drains, which simply means that a vessel got close enough, we remove them. Now, instead of simply discarding these oxygen drains altogether, we reuse them as initiators for the development of the venous system. The idea behind this is based on the function of the venous system to transport waste products away from the tissue. So we simply relabel satisfied oxygen drains as carbon dioxide sources and let the venous system grow in the same manner as the arterial one. After this constrained growth process, we update all the radii of vessel trees that developed a new vessel branch. Basically, we update the radii to allow the additional needed blood to flow through the vessel trees to the tissue region. At last, the tissue itself is grown uniformly. With the speed of the algorithm in mind, we scale the unit distance, which localizes the growth process with respect to the whole tissue domain. This is mainly responsible in establishing this fractal appearance of the vessel networks. 
So they create repeating geometric structures at the smaller scale. After the scaling, the whole process starts anew for a fixed number of iterations. In the end, the modified space colonization algorithm can create the arterial and the venous blood vessels from predefined starting positions and the tissue geometry. The example here is slowed down quite significantly and only takes around 100 milliseconds to compute. Other than an octree for the frequent nearest neighbor searches, no optimizations were implemented. The output of the algorithm can be controlled by various parameters. I will show you the influence of the three most important ones which we introduced in our approach. For further details on all the parameters, please see our paper and the paper of Runyans et al. The parameter changes here are shown in real time. With the bifurcation index of Moore's law, we can control the shrinkage of vessel radii along a vascular tree, which directly influences the constructed angles inside of bifurcations. Another parameter represents a threshold for initiating the development of symmetric bifurcations. You can see that higher values lead to more prominent lateral branches. The last parameter I want to show you can be seen as a constraint stiffness, which allows me to control the strictness of the constraint. For high values, this results in rather unrealistic patterns. A nice feature of the space colonization algorithm is its ability to limit the region in which vessels grow solely by the placement of oxygen drains. For example, we can guide the proliferation of vessels along the surface of a mesh by sampling its primitives, or we can grow inside the volume by voxelizing the geometry. We make use of this guiding mechanism also to define paths allowing the creation of characteristic vessels for specific organs. At last, I want to give you a brief overview of the visualization of the vessels. In our implementation, we provide a preview of the results with aligned and scaled cubes. However, for the actual construction of a high quality artifact free mesh, we use a method introduced by Hiatzi et al. It treats the bifurcations as a convex hull of the vertices of all involved vessel endings and in the end generates a single closed mesh for each vessel tree. Having constructed the vessel geometry, we can further use it to create a surface texture for the tissue. Currently, we create such a texture by baking the rasterized projections of shallow lying vessels for each primitive. Here you can see two example scenes with such generated vessel textures for the colon and the conjunctiva. For the vessels of the latter, multiple vessel trees were first grown individually at different sizes and then combined. Sadly, due to copyright reasons, we cannot share the original images that we used as a reference. But the overall plausibility of the scene is certainly improved with the use of the automatic generated vessel textures. Even though some visual characteristics, such as closed loops, that is redundant paths inside vessel networks are missing. This is especially true for the colon. This already concludes my presentation. To quickly summarize, we synthesize blood vessels by modeling the overall growth process as a competition for space. During the development, we enforce local geometry constraints on the vessels based on well-known bifurcation optimization principles and visual characteristics of real vascular patterns. In addition, we propose to use an interdependent growth model for the arterial and the venous system, derived conceptually from the functioning of the venous system to transport waste products away from the tissue. At last, we outline a visualization pipeline to create corresponding vessel geometry and surface textures for organs. Currently, the interpretation of the results is rather subjective. So the next step is to look at the empirical data of real vessels and compare it to the synthesized ones. It is likely that in reaction to this analysis, we need to include additional constraints, maybe even global to get matching morphometric data. It would also be interesting to have some kind of evaluation of the usability of our tool. For example, by letting an artist recreate certain vascular patterns. Something that could be an interesting extension is to combine the growth of the vessels with a more sophisticated organ growth model. For example, where the vessels are also deformed due to the development of the tissue. It may play an important role in the resulting visual patterns. This leaves me with a big thank you for watching. I highly appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed the conference so far.